my goodness, my gosh, and my golly. It's almost been five years. I am overdue to make a sequel to my most viewed YouTube video on my channel. The long awaited. It's getting real. Better late than never. Today's countdown will be the top seven dark deleted scenes from Disney and Pixar films. The sequel. This time, the editing will be better. Let's begin. I hope you enjoy the video. A long time coming. Let's begin. I already feel like The Incredible Sure puts in a lot of material in a PG film for kids. Violence, off-screen death, on-screen death, and attempted suicide. The scene, which was changed in the final version of the film, is when Helen and her kids fly in an airplane in the Moransian Island to save Bob Har from Syndrome. Everything is pretty much the same in the delete scene, except instead of Helen driving the jet, is an old friend of hers named Snug, while in the final cut, Snug lends Helen one of his jets. What makes this scene even more intense is the fact that Snug was left for dead and you can see his hat briefly floating underwater with no trace of his lifeless body. In my opinion, I'm glad Brad Bird left this out. It would have felt redundant since we already had a character dying in a jet explosion. Plus, the actual scene they used she was a lot more intense due to the high stakes. I mean, a mother is trying to get her kids to safety. On top of that, Helen was yelling at Violet to make a force field around the jet. Something about Snug driving the jet doesn't feel the same. But nonetheless, it is pretty dark due to the fact that he literally dies. Whether it's off screen or on screen. Up had many different concepts of Charles Munn's death, rather than having balloons tied to his ankles and falling to his demise. A Disney picture. I mean, I already thought his death was already pretty messed up. How much more messed up could it be, you and I may ask? Well, the first concept is that Muzz is having hallucinations of Kevin the Snipe being everywhere around him in this misty rock terrain and wanders in there forever until he probably most likely dies. <laughs> I did it! After all these years! Then one concept, Munz falls down with the house while Doug and the dogs fall along with him. Master has the bird! The bird! No! No! Then the final one, he is tied a balloon similar to the actual death they chose except he floats upwards rather than plummeting to his impending doom. I feel like all these alternate deaths are messed up, but if I had to rank them, the least messed up is him floating up. In the middle would be him sinking in the house with Doug and the dog henchman. And the most would have been when he loses his mind, thinking he has caught Kevin because it is a psychological death 
which I think is the most terrifying type of horror. I think I'm glad they didn't go with these because I feel like it doesn't fit with the type of movie it is. These scenes are definitely unsettling though, no doubt. Cars 2 is considered the worst Pixar film up to date despite having a box office performance of 500 million worldwide. But it manages to have material in it that wouldn't normally be in a film that is red G. This is one of the most pseudo rated G movies ever, with torture scenes plus off screen and on screen deaths. You remember that scene at the beginning of Cars 2 when you see Leland Turbo as a cube while Finn Missile looks in horror? Would you like to see it actually happen? I'll take that as a yes. The scene starts out with Leland Turbo got some intel on Dr. Zundap's plan and then Turbo is speeding away from the Doc's minions, so he won't be captured. While he thinks he got away hiding in a junkyard, the bad guys catch him anyways, and a crane pulls him up, and he's set in a crusher, and this happens. There is Finn McMissile. You'll never catch him. He will stop you. <laughs> we will see. So, my eyes are correct. Dang. Wasn't that torture scene in Cube Turbo enough? Like, dang, after only interrogating for barely a few seconds, and then Turbo succumbs to his fate by being crushed to death and becoming a red gang cube. I felt like this movie was trying way too hard to be edgy so they can get an older audience interested despite the G rating, but failed in a lot of people's eyes. If I'm going to be honest, this movie is a guilty pleasure for me at least. But we can all agree that the MPAA must have been in a coma for giving this movie a G rating. I declare this deleted scene even more terrifying than Lost from Cars 1. The Lion King has had many concepts changed before it was finalized, with several scenes, characters, and songs left out. Scar has his own song in the movie, but he was supposed to have a second song as scrap probably due to obvious reasons. In this deleted scene, Scar tries to make advances towards Nala. You're probably already seeing where this is going. Have a look. I won't bite. Scar, it's chaos out there and someone needs to do something. Who will start? My cylinders firing with fervor. And you, my sweet thing, fit the part. Excuse me? A king alone is a sad situation indeed, but a king without heirs. Now that's a tragedy. You can't be serious. I've never been more serious. Be prepared for a stunning proposal. That power and beauty should bond Which cannot but fail to ensure cries of hail To the chief and his consort The sine qua non sort of ruling ascendants Our line of descendants will flow through the pride and beyond But if someone tries to touch you in a place or in a way that makes you feel uncomfortable That's no good Yeah, I think Disney didn't want to have to jump the rating a bit higher because we all know the lovely MPAA will be lifting an eyebrow. 
Then again, it didn't stop the Hunchback of Notre Dame for some reason for having similar situation. What are you doing? I was just imagining a rope around that beautiful neck. I know what you're imagining. I have mixed feelings about them removing the scene. One half of me thinking that is really freaking dark and creepy. But the other half wanted to keep it in the movie to show more of how Scar is a scumbag. The more I think about it, the movie probably had enough dark elements. So adding the scene there would be over the top and possibly receiving a PG rating. I don't know, there are a lot of stuff in here that could pass for PG nowadays. I'm going to sort of break the rules a bit, but despite being a live-action film, Who Framed Roger Rabbit is technically an animated film as well. This is an movie that probably gave the MPAA nightmares on what the rating they should give it. Violence, language, death, and sexual innuendos. But how more messed up can this movie be, you may ask? Well, in this dark deleted scene, Eddie Valiant is captured by Judge Doom. Doom mentions that he will take Eddie to downtown, but mentions that it is downtown Toontown, and Eddie screams in horror. He wakes up in the middle of the road with a bag on his head and takes it off, realizing his head has turned into a pig head. He goes home to take, ay, 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 take care of it. This is a lot more disturbing than it should have been. What makes this scene even more dark is the fact that pig head he removed probably was sentient life and the remains were washed down the drain with eyeballs and flesh. The movie was already dark enough. I think Robert Zemeckis did us all a favor in removing that. I am rarely squeamish, but this scene made it feel awfully sick. But the lead scene wouldn't be out of place in a PG-13 or R film. That's for sure. I should have gave this movie a PG-13 rating. I know I've mentioned Zootopia before in the other video. I mean, it is in the thumbnail. But this deleted scene is another one relating to the scrap shot collar plot point. This is a combination of dark and sad at the same time. Nick and Judy are in stealth mode sneaking into a taming party for predators. Polar bears in this situation. Judy curiously watches the ceremony. I feel like the rest of the scene speaks for itself. Is this, is this a taming party? With this color, Zootopia welcomes you. With this color, Zootopia welcomes me. With this color, Zootopia celebrates you. With this color, Zootopia celebrates me. With this color, Zootopia accepts you. With this color, Zootopia accepts me.
What's wrong, Papa? Nothing. Papa is just happy for you. Morris. <laughs> Morris. <gasps> Dang. What a harsh reality that is. Even though Zootopia is one of my favorite animated Disney films of all time, I am still genuinely curious on how the original concept would have turned out. It was sort of a missed opportunity. Who knows, maybe they can make the second film about that plot point. Toy Story had a few different concepts in the past that were questionable due to Jeffrey Kastenberg's vision of it where it was dark, edgy, and cynical, which doesn't sound like a family film at all. Slinky! Slink! Slanky! Get up here and do your job! Are you deaf? I said take- No! No! Ah! Ah! No! I'm sorry! I'm sorry! Oh no! I'll never hurt you again! No! No! Mom! For those who haven't seen my last video, Woody was originally an evil toy who had little to no remorse for his actions. What? Am I hearing correctly? You don't think I was right? Who said your job was to think, Spring Wiener? Well, I, I just just use you... this vast reserve of brain power to consider this for a moment. But there was a dark deleted scene they had that was eventually used in Toy Story 2. But not as dark and sinister. Woody's Nightmare. In the original concept, in this version, Andy in this version seems angrier, while in Toy Story 2 Nightmare scene, where he just seems disappointed. Dang, they really had to end the nightmare with cockroaches crawling all over Woody in the trash can. This deleted scene is dark because it just doesn't feel like it fits the tone of the movie's story. Sure, there are some conflict and hardships and thematic elements in the actual movie, but it was lighthearted. This dark deleted scene feels out of place in Toy Story, but wouldn't it be out of place in a Tim Burton film? Welp, once again, we went through more Dr. Leah Disney scenes. I feel nostalgic about this video. Hopefully, I have a third installment, which probably won't be for a while. Hope you all enjoyed this video if any of you watched it all the way through. I tried my best to edit this better than I did with my first installment, which had a massive viewership and mostly positive feedback, but was met with constructive criticism that I listened to. Hopefully, I didn't disappoint. See you all in the next videos. Schnobs, signing out until the next episode. Cue the outro. Every night my head hits the pillow. I'm trying to go to sleep, but I'm thinking of my yellow. Imaginary scenes are replacing all my dreams. Every time I say your name, it's an echo. Hello. Start the engine, know the key to my car. You're the light of my life when I needed a spark. Uh, I can see you from